we carry on our uh, topical discussion and we are discussing the first section of the financial risk management and i think in this part i'll be discussing uh, the forwards and the futures with you and here i plan to discuss that we can have the sorry that's my colleague so the first uh, First point, of the, if you see this section, if you see this uh, list of topics, uh, we shall first discuss the forwards. But before I go to the forward, let me tell you that the global uh, Forex market uh, is massive. And I haven't updated the data yet, but I think if you go to the Bank of International Settlements, uh, website. You can have the latest figure, but last time when I saw many years ago, it showed that there is a 7 trillion uh, forex trading every day. So every day, if you see that how much trading has been done for of the foreign exchange uh, by the companies, by the individuals, by the global organization, uh, the transactions amount to 7 trillion on every day basis. And if you multiply 7 trillion by 250 working days, because normally we have 250 working days in a year, uh, then I think I don't have any tools to calculate how massive that figure would be. Maybe, maybe something about 1,700 or 2,000 approximately trillion a day, uh, a year basis. Uh, the companies these days, they, they earn the revenue in the one country, but the costs are paid in another. So a Belgian company uh, having its production capacities in Bulgaria, but all the production is sold to Canada. So then you are earning in Canadian dollars, but your, your cost could be in the Bulgarian uh, currency. So it's a big risk that if the cost currency becomes expensive, appreciate, and the revenue currency depreciates, that's the Canadian dollars, then you can have a loss from both sides. Uh, similarly, the time difference between the dates when the prices of international transactions are determined. I gave you one example of the forward uh, act uh, contract. Uh, when you buy or sell something today, but you will not be making any payment until next three or four months. So in that case, uh, the time difference can make things complicated for you because it could be possible that if, you, if you're going to make a payment, if you buy something from Australia and you agree to pay them in Australian dollars and you are going to pay them in the month of March 2021 and you don't do any risk management, then it could be possible that the day of payment comes and you are going to pay in Australian dollars and on that day, the Australian dollar is damn expensive in comparison to the domestic currency. And that could be very dangerous. Uh, there are many European companies which are manufacturing in Europe, but exporting to the US. And that's very simple. And then there is a European firm selling in Europe, but manufacturing in China. And these are some examples. And then the European firms manufacturing in China and selling to the US. So these are some examples which can put you, which can put your company deep under financial risk. And unless you do a proper risk management, then there's always a danger that you could be in trouble. Now, how do we do this risk management? Well, we do this risk management with the help of the forward contract. The forward contract are very old fashioned contracts. And here, uh, and this contract is between the company and a bank. Uh, it could be between a bank and a bank as well. Uh, but normally this contract is between a company, the multinational company and a multinational bank, basically. And what you do, you try to, you, you agree to, you mean the company, the multinational company agrees with uh, a multinational bank to buy or sell a specified amount, a specified currency, 
a specified rate of exchange and a specified date. Okay, so for example, let me make it now once again. Uh, let me type it and create an example. Otherwise, it can be a bit complicated. Uh, let there be let there be a multinational company. Uh, we have this. XYZ, a multinational company is going to import machinery from Australia, the payment will be made in Australian dollars. The cost of the machinery, or the price rather, the price of the machinery is uh, is Australian dollar twenty uh, million one two three four five six and payment due date is thirty first March twenty twenty one today on what day is today is 11th of december today on 11th december the exchange rate is let me ask you now how should i write exchange rate between uh, australian dollar and uh, euro Mm-hmm. I'm not saying how much that, that I can assume, but how should I write exchange rate? Uh, one Australian dollar is equal to blah, blah, euro. Yes, very good, very good. Excellent. Let's say zero point 73 Australian dollar. When uh, the company negotiates with the MNC bank, say HSBC, A letter offers a forward exchange rate to XYZ. And XYZ is a multinational company based in Belgium. So that you know that who is the domestic. Um, offers a forward rate, forward exchange rate to XYZ, which is equal to one uh, Australian dollar equals to zero point, let's say, 76. And we assume that X, Y, Z accepts this offer 
of forward rate. Now, what are the key characteristics? of this forward, this currency, this FX forward, this Forex, Forex forward uh, contract. Number one, number one, there is a, there is a specified specified currency. I'm sorry if I make mistake, then please remind me, which is Australian dollar. There is a specified amount, which is 2 million, 20 million, sorry. One, two, three, four, five, six. There is a specified exchange rate which is uh, one Australian dollar is equal to, what, what did we agree? 76, 76 cents, yeah. So 0 0.76. And there is a specified time period. Well, let's say deadline. Which is the first March 20. These are the four specifications. And if any of these specifications are missing in the contract, then the forward contract is held void. It doesn't, it, it doesn't work. Okay, so now what happens now? Now, on, what day is today? Uh, 11th of December, XYZ knows that on 31st March, 2021, it will pay uh, 0 0.76 or euro, so euro 0 0.76 uh, multiply by 20 million. One, two, three, four, five, six equals to euro um, 15. One, two, three, four, five, six. So this is equal to Euro 15.2 million. This is a big achievement that the company doesn't have to do this calculation. Every, look, there is a almost, um, you know, more than three months between now and 31st March, 2021. And if you don't do, if you keep your position naked, I use this word before also, if you, if you keep your position naked or unhedged, unhedge, naked, then you will be scared of this change in the dollar, Australian dollar variation against Euro. And sometimes it goes low, sometimes it goes up. And if unfortunately on 31st March, 2021, the Australian dollar is very expensive, it can kill the company's cash flows. To avoid this situation, uh, we know that right now on 11th of December, we are very sure that how much money will be uh, paying to Australian dollar. If you are importing something, then you are afraid of the foreign currency getting appreciated. And the same thing happens if you are selling something, then you are afraid of the foreign currency going down because it can kill your cash inflows. Okay, so in this situation, in this example, you are scared of your going your cash outflow increasing too much. So therefore, it's very important that you uh, you do the hedging, and the forward is a very old-fashioned and very traditional form of hedging. 
we use one more word which i really want to use here also that it's a locked in contract <laughs> locked in contract so so in other words you cannot you cannot reverse it i i make a cynical situation um, imagine that on third you make this contract on 11th of december today on 15th of december 15th four days after today uh, it happens that you cancel the contract with this australian company you will not buy anything from australia from this australian company anymore in other words you don't need 20 million australian dollars and you go to the hsbc bank and say that since we are not going to buy anything from australia can we cancel the contract that we signed on 11th of december uh, uh, hsbc bank manager would give you a very scary stare and ask you that hey never ask me this thing this is a uh, locked in contract lock in which means the contract is signed you have to honor it and you say what do what do i do now because i don't need 20 million then this manager would say that hey on 31st march 2021 you take australian dollars from me 20 million you pay me 15.2 million euros and then do whatever you want with these 20 million australian dollars then you can also sell it in the market if you want but i i mean i'm i'm saying on behalf of hsbc i will not cancel this contract nobody can neither bank can cancel it nor you can you mean the company can run away from the contract it has to be honored it's a irreversible it's a irreversible irreversible or we also use the word irrevocable which means you can't revoke it you can't cancel it one signed you lock in and it stays and then there is a no secondary market for these contract no secondary market in other words xyz uh x y z cannot sell this contract in any exchange or market exchange the market by the way or sell directly to another company abc when the bank says when hsbc says that hey don't don't ask me to cancel this contract it it will not happen it will not happen and you you are not going to buy anything from australia then you are lured that hey what should i do then well can i sell this contract in the like like stock exchange you buy shares and then you sell them uh, can i do it in any stock in in any forward exchange there is no forward exchange first of all so you can't do it and then you find that hey my my friend uh, abc company they also buy from australia uh, and they also need to pay them some company in australian dollars can i can i give my contract can i pass can i uh transfer my contract to abc even if uh, hsbc doesn't like it uh you cannot you cannot it's it's not transferable contract okay so, so it's not revocable uh, it's it's, uh, it's it, and it's not even it is not even um how to sell it transferable so the contract is yours you have to honor it so that way uh, it's so does it appears to be 
to be a, a rigid contract. So it's very rigid in this case. Uh, but it's safe. So these are some of the features of the forward contract. So I quickly repeat. First, I explained it, it with the help of uh, the import, but this time I explained it with the help of the export. You are an XYZ multinational company and you are again in this example based in Belgium. Uh, you are going to export machinery to Canada and the Canadian company will be paying you in Canadian dollars. So you are exposed to risk because your home currency is Euro, but you'll get the money in Canadian dollars. And there's the fear you have is that the Canadian dollar can depreciate, can go down and it can harm your cash inflows. The price of the machinery which you sell is Canadian 20 million and, and you will receive the payment. I mean, the XYZ will receive the payment on 31st March, 2021. Today on 11th of December, the exchange rate is one Canadian dollar is 73 European cents. And there is a fear that the, it can go down. And when you have a, when you approach the bank manager of HSBC and you say that, hey, we are going to receive something 20 million from Canada on 31st March, but we are afraid that the rate of exchange can be unfavorable to us, means can go down. Can you offer us a forward, a FX Forex forward uh, contract? And the bank says, okay, why not? We have an offer for you. Uh, whatever is the rate of exchange in the market, I guarantee you that I'll pay you 72 cents for every one Canadian dollar which you give to me. And you think that it's, it's worth, and you say, all right, let's lock in, let's sign the contract. It means now that there are four spe uh, specifications. There is a specified currency. Uh, it can't change. You can't move this contract from, from Canada to, to Mexico. So it has to be in Canadian dollars. Specified amount. Uh, if tomorrow the Canadian dollar, Canadian companies say, hey, we don't want to buy from you for 20 million, but want to buy for 10 million. Well, you can't change it to 10 million then. It has to be 20 million. Everything is specified. Uh, specified exchange rate. Okay, you can't ask the bank afterward to make a change. And there is a specified deadline time period. Not even a day can change. Uh, if the company, this Canadian company phones you and say, hey, you know what, we agreed that we pay you on 31st March. Uh, can I pay you on 10th of April now? <laughs> you can't go to the bank and ask for an extension of the contract, no. Uh, so now on, uh, 11th of December, 2020, the company knows that it, it will receive a uh, 14.4 million uh, home domestic currency. So it's sort of guarantee. You don't have to be scared of the fluctuations. It's a lock-in contract. It's irreversible, it's irrevocable. Um, there's no secondary market. It's not like a share where you can buy and sell, uh, nor you can transfer to somebody else. So that way, uh, the forward contracts are rigid, okay? So I hope this example makes some sense. All right, so now I'm, uh, we are back after the break. Um, yeah. So we were discussing about the, the features of the forward contract. And I must say that uh, one feature which I forgot to mention is that uh, the, this is a settlement by the actual delivery. Actual delivery means that um, in case of the Canadian company, um, you must give 20 million Canadian dollar to the bank and the bank would give you 14.4 million uh, euros as, as we discussed in the example. So there is, it's not a margin-based uh, contract, uh, but it's based on the actual delivery. 
when you sign the contract with the bank, in the example, it was HSBC, uh, it means that you will be selling, uh, you will be providing 20 million Canadian dollars to the, to the bank on 31st March, 2021. And on that day, the bank HSBC would be transferring 14.4 uh, million euros in your bank account. So basically, there is an actual delivery. And as you could see from the example, even though they were hypothetical, uh, it's it involves a lot of money. I mean, it's a big contract. So if you are going on holidays or if you are a small company uh, buying for a couple of thousand or maybe uh, 100,000, then maybe it could be a expensive contract for you. So because the bank also take its commission, by the way. So don't forget that the bank is charging its uh, service fee as well in the contract. So it could be possible that uh, it's only a luxury of the big companies, but not the SMEs or startups. And then there is one more example here discussed, um, but basically it's the same. If you, if you have understood the example which I shared with you on the whiteboard, uh, then that is the main example which you should focus on. And now we go to the next contract called Futures. Uh, if you look at the contract, uh, if you don't have much exposure with the, uh, with the Forex market, you can be confused uh, by the word forward and the futures. Well, they're quite similar, very similar actually. Uh, but the only difference is that in case of forwards, the forward contracts are more rigid, but the future contract is basically more flexible. Flexible in the sense that, mm, but one thing before I discussed about the future more, uh, about the forward is that the forward contract, not the one with the screen shows, but the forward contracts, they have one more feature which I forgot to mention, is that they are, where is the word? So they are like, if the word doesn't show up anywhere, then I would write it here. Yeah. So the forward contracts are forward contracts are tailor made. Uh, when I say tailor made, it means that because it is signed, uh, or we also call them over the counter. Or if I, the abbreviation is OTC. Forward contracts are tailor-made or over-the-counter, which means that because it is, it's not a market-based contract. It's a contract between the company and the bank. Therefore, it's negotiable. Remember, there are four specifications. Specified rate of exchange, specified deadline, specified amount, and specified currency. Before you sign the contract, the forwards are pretty much flexible because you don't have to uh, take a product which is available in the market. Before the contract is signed, you can negotiate about the rate of exchange, about the maturity period, about the deadline, about the amount, everything is flexible, but before the contract becomes logged in. And why there is this flexibility? It's a bit contradictory that the forwards are very flexible before you sign them. It's very negotiable. Look at the word over the counter. Over the counter means on the one side of the table you are sitting, on the other side it's the bank, bank manager, and you negotiate, you agree. You can discuss the, about all these things. All these four specifications are negotiable. Okay, but 
once you sign it, uh, then it become a kind of very rigid contract because there's no secondary market. Uh, you can't backtrack, you can't back out. Uh, and if somebody does, it, the company or the bank, even the bank can back out. But in that case, even the bank can be back blacklisted. So, but before it happens, it's very much tailor-made. Tailor-made means the very, very much su suitable according to the customer's needs. So it can, you can ask the bank to, to create a contract which suits you perfectly. The word tailor-made is very flexible, very interesting, because if you notice, uh, if I want to buy a jacket for myself, I have two options. The first option is that I can go to some shop, like uh, some any, you know, uh, Marks and Spencer or, or H&M or is it H&M or men's wear? Anyways, so you can go to any store uh, where I can buy a ready-made jacket. But it could be possible that if the length is fine, maybe the arms are small or something is wrong. So then I find that, hey, I, I don't think uh, this shop or the market-based contract or the market-based jacket is suitable to me. Then I can go to a tailor and ask him that, can you take full measurement of me and create a jacket for me, which is uh, according to my needs. And if it is stitched, measured, tailored, stitched, it's like tailor-made, it suits me only, but now nobody else can wear it. You get my point? If I ask Taylor that, hey, I don't want to buy this jacket, then he can't sell it to anybody else. The same thing happens in, in case of forward contract. Before the contract is signed, the tailor, the bank, can create a contract for, for me, the company. In this example, it was uh, XYZ, the Belgian company. They can create a contract for me, which suits me perfectly. But if I back out, then this contract is not, it's very hard for a bank to find a exact replacement of me because the contract is tailor made. But if this contract is available, like you go in the showroom in the, in the, in the, in the, in the, in some departmental store and you go to the, uh, this clothing section and you find that there are jackets and you can try, okay, not this, that one. So whatever suits you, you pick up. And if, and, uh, and it's even returnable. You can even return it afterward. They give you 30 days to return it as well. So, so a lot of flexibility, but in the big shop, in the big department store, the flexibility is after you sign the contract, it means after you pay or, take their speed. Uh, but if it is a tailor-made jacket, then all the flexibilities about the size, pricing, you can even negotiate the price with the tailor. Uh, all these things are beforehand. But when you commit to get the jacket stitched, then you can't back out because then the loss, your loss is now the tailor's loss. So why should the tailor bear the loss for you? So that is that is the main difference between uh, the, the, the contract which are OTC over the counter or we call them tailor-made. Okay, I hope it makes sense what I said. And then we go to the future contract. The future contracts, uh, they look pretty much similar to the forward contracts. But the difference is that the future contracts are not tailor-made. The future contracts are like buying a jacket from a departmental store. So there are jackets lined, different sizes, different colors, different shapes. You buy, if it fits your needs, you buy it. Uh, if it doesn't fit, don't buy it. <laughs> and if you ask the, 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 the person who works and in the, the sales assistant, that can you change this jacket sleeves for me, blah, blah, blah. They say, no, I'm sorry, just they are, they are already, tailored so we can't make any change that is the future contract you can't make it okay but the good the good news is that the good news of the future contract is, is that you can buy today and return tomorrow <laughs> so it means it's not a lock in thing the lock in thing is in the forward contract 
it's lock out now in case of future contract. So it means that if you buy, if you agree with the person who's selling this future contract, that, hey, I'm going to get 20 million Canadian dollars in, uh, on 31st March, 2021. Uh, can we sign a future contract, not the forward, future contract today? And this person in this example who would be giving this contract is not the bank now. It would be a future exchange. Exchange means the market. So you buy it from the market. And today is 11th of December, 2020. And the price is fixed, the exchange rate is fixed. And let's say the same example, 72 cents for one uh, Canadian dollar. And you know for sure that on 31st March, 2021, you will be getting 14.4 million euros. So everything is same, but only difference is that. Actually, I can show you with this example. Um, where is the whiteboard here? Yeah. So the only difference is that in this example, why can't I change it? Can I? Oh, text. Okay. Oops. Sorry. Yeah. So, so in this example, uh, XYZ is a multinational company based in Belgium, is going to export machinery to Canada. And the payment will be received in Canadian dollar and the price of the machine is everything is plus 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 same. Um, when the company negotiates with this time, it's not a bank. This time it will be, well, I can, but you understand the point that in this case, in case of futures, uh, the bank is not involved, but who's involved? It's some exchange, the market. And you have negotiated that on 31st March, 2021, you would be giving 20 million Canadian dollars and the, and the exchange would give you 14.4 million. But the difference is that it's not a lock-in contract. If tomorrow you change your mind, you can, you can sell it, you can refuse. So th there is a, so there is a secondary market for the futures. For the futures, there is a secondary market. So it's possible that you can transfer it, you can sell it. So futures are more market oriented contracts. But the forwards are not market oriented contracts. Uh, otherwise, again, there are four specificities, uh, specified a currency, specified amount, specified rate of exchange, and the specified uh, period. And these are rigid in the beginning, uh, in the sense that it's like I, I gave you example that you go to a departmental store and you want to buy a jacket, you have to pick up the one they are, they will not stitch for you separately. So the futures are not uh, tailor made contracts. But after you buy it, the good news is that there is a flexibility that you can cancel the contract, you can sell it or transfer it. It could be possible when I buy a jacket from a store, it could be possible that I don't need it. So maybe I return it after a few days. Or it's possible that the size is a little bit uh, big or small, then I can also exchange it with some other jacket. And it's quite okay, it, it normally happens. Okay, so that way, uh, the future contract is more market-like contract. And it happens between the company and this time there's no bank. This time it is the future exchange, okay? And once again, the future exchange, uh, sorry, the, the futures are very big. Uh, on, on daily basis, it's about, uh, now the figure is more, I think it's 150 billion, uh, approximately 150 billion uh, dollars uh, are actually traded in the Forex uh, future contracts on daily basis. So it's a massive amount. Actually, you can get all this information from uh, the website. If I show you, 
if I, for example, uh, wait a sec. If I Yeah, so if I share my screen with you and you go to BIS, uh, Bank of International Settlement, uh, then you can get all the statistics from, from this. Uh, derivatives, foreign exchange. Uh, foreign exchange statistics, or maybe derivatives, yeah. Exchange traded derivatives. So you can see that the exchange traded derivatives, so you can get the data from here. Or if you want to, what is that? Let's check the PDF. How much is that? Yeah. What is the amount yeah. in billion of US dollars? Oh my gosh. So the if you only look at the American dollars, it's uh, $82,600 billion trading in the, in the Forex foreign exchange contracts. So it's a huge market, massive. Yeah, it's scary in many senses. All right, now, one thing I want to discuss with you that you should know that who are the people trading in the forward. Uh, generally speaking, if you are a company who is genuinely buying and selling the goods and services abroad in the foreign country, and you will be either making the payment or getting the payment uh, when you give or deliver the goods and services. So you are a genuinely some manufacturer, trader, uh, company, then you know for sure that, well, exceptions can happen that this contract is, uh, is canceled, but on 95, 96% cases, the contract is implemented. If you are a genuine trader, then the forward contracts are good for you because you know for sure that by the deadline, you will be receiving this money or paying this money. But if you, if you don't want to lock in yourself, if you don't want to lock in yourself, then the future contracts are good, better than the forwards. The question is, why don't you want to lock in yourself? Imagine, you are a Belgian, not company, but you are a Belgian trader, speculator, okay, who have this kind of hope that Australian dollar can become expensive. In next three months. So you hope that uh, about 31st March 2021, Australian dollar would be very expensive against uh, Euro. And you have nothing to buy from Australia, no, no machinery, no technology, nothing. And you have some 20 million, uh, you have some money, euros, uh, surplus with you, and you want to invest it. Then 
you can go and buy the future contract of Australian dollar. Okay, with the hope that in the future, the market price will go up. So in this case, you have a time window up to 31st March, 2021. This is the contract, let's say. But you don't have to wait till 31st March, 2021. So for example, today, let, let me create this example because then it will be easy for you to understand. So let me uh, create the whiteboard example. So if I go to the next uh, thingy, text, yeah. X, Y, Z is a Belgian company or a trader, trader or speculator, speculator even. There are speculation companies who speculate. They just bet against, uh, and it has let's say 10 million euros, uh, 10 million euros, 10 million to invest. It has a strong perception that in the future, Let's say in three months, Australian dollar will appreciate against Euro. Thus, it thinks of buying Australian dollars in the Forex futures market and hope that market price, the market exchange rate, rate of Australian dollar to Euro rise and give extra gain to XYZ. Imagine the current rate of exchange is one Australian dollar equals uh, Euro 76 and it enters a future contract with a future exchange. This time I will not take the bank because the bank do not do it. Banks are very lock-in type future exchange. Uh, let's call it 75. Uh, does uh, so you give 75 and you get one euro. Let's make it 80 because I'm, I'm doing it because I want to make my calculation simpler. Does by investing 10 million euro XYZ and by, uh, if you divide 10 million euros by 80, cents, it become Australian dollars, 12.50 million. That, this is why I was trying to take the simple million. So if it was 
if it was if it is a future contract then the condition would be that by 31st march now i keep all the four specificity that by 31st march on 31st march uh, you will be having 10 million and you will be getting 12.50 million you know if that is exchange rate continues but what happens is that on 12th december 2021 uh, so no 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 2020 the exchange rate in the market is one australian dollar equals uh, euro 90. hey you have a right to buy one Australian dollar for 80 cents, whereas in the market next day, and this contract is valid for, again, let's say 31st March, 2021, but you don't have to wait till 31st March, 2021. Very next day, you sign the contract with the exchange today on 11th of December, but on 12th of December, very next day, the market price is 90 European cents for one Australian dollar. And you feel that, hey, this is a big jump. And this is the maximum price, which perhaps you can get. You think that, hey, I mean, it depends on you. You have a strong perception that maybe you will not get more than 90 uh, cents for an Australian dollar. So what you do, you sell Australian dollars. How many? You sell Australian dollar. Uh, 12.50 million in the FX future exchange. Okay, so this is this. There is no actual delivery. You, it's all uh, trading is based on the margin, and the margin is that you have the right to buy one Australian dollar at 80 cents, but the very next day, the market price is 90. And you think that this is the maximum price you can perhaps get, which means for every one Australian dollar, you can earn 10 cents in Europe. And if you multiply it by uh, how much money did you invest? Well, you invested actually uh, 12.50 because that's, that's what you have. Uh, uh, for one Australian dollar, you earn 10 cents, and for 12.50 million, uh, 12.50 million, so how much money you learn? Well, you earn basically um, you sell one Australian dollar and you get 90 cents, whereas you bought uh, Australian dollar for 80 cents. So it means if you multiply 12.50 million with uh, 10 cents, you earn 1.25 million in one day. In one day. There you go. So this is how you earn through the future contract. The future contracts are exchange traded, traded, and they are canceled, basically. Uh, should I call them cancel or should I call them they are, and the investors, 
take the counter position before the deadline. Look, you had the right to buy, uh, you had the right to buy 12.5 million Australian dollars. But did you keep them till the end of the period? No. You took the counter position and you sold them in the market. That is called, called counter position, the opposite position. So you have the right to buy and you sell them. And same way, if you have the right to sell them, you buy them. And the invest, that is called the counter position, the opposite position. And the investors take uh, the counter position before the deadline. In fact, 99.99999 percentage contracts. Uh, which contract? The future contracts. The future contracts are closed, not canceled, but closed. Closed is a better word before the deadline. The deadline. So it means that in this example, you are not a uh, Belgian company who is going to sell some machinery to Canada and then this Canadian company will deliver the ship, get the shipment, then it pays you. It's not really like real exchange. It's more like a future is more like, an, like, a, like a speculation, basically. So you are betting against the movement of exchange rate. You can be successful, like in this example, but you can go miserably uh, fail as well. So there is, it's not a kind of jackpot that you will be definitely getting. It could be possible that you were hoping the Australian dollars to go up from 80. You bought at 80, but you were thinking it will go 81, 90, blah, blah, blah. But it never goes. During the whole three months, it keeps going down. And it keeps going down so much so that you have no option but to sell it uh, before it goes further down. So then you, then you have a loss. Okay. So in this case, you are not a genuine manufacturer trader of goods and services. Here, you are like a speculator, uh, a trading company who deals in the forex market and whose job is only to bet against or in favor of certain currencies and you are doing this uh, based on, it's, it's more like a speculative. So F FX futures uh, are reflecting the speculative side, side of companies. Well, companies also speculate. So maybe you are a XYZ company who is going to sell goods to Canada, but you also have money to invest in Australian dollars. So the companies also bet, by the way. And so it's possible that it works both ways. Um, any questions or comments based on this example? Sorry, just a sec. I'm up. It's two chapters. I'm still working. I'm working here. Yeah. Okay. But I'll. Today. Everything. Today. Yes, yes. Because I know that if I can start tomorrow. No, no, no. I, I'll, yeah. I'll do everything. Okay, so, so now we know that how we treat the, how we treat the, uh, the futures. The fu so the futures are more speculative. Uh, that, that is something we need to keep in mind that, um, like in this example, you are a Belgian company, but you are not interested in buying anything from Australia. So you are not going to buy any machinery or technology from Australia. All you are interested in is that your people, either you read from the market um, some news, or you have employed some researchers in your own organization, uh, people who, who who have studied finance, uh, the, uh, your CFO and his team, they have a strong perception that Australian dollar is going to go up in the future. 
against Jibro. And you think that you have 10 million uh, euros to invest somewhere, but there's no other better uh, investment opportunity. Then why not to invest in Australian dollars? Because you buy them now and the price can go up. But then somebody tells you that, hey, why don't you buy from the futures? Because if you buy the forward, then you have to keep way till the end of the period, 31st March in this case. Can we have more flexible instruments? And to say, yes, there is possible. We can go and trade in the future market, the Forex futures. There is a specified currency. There is a specified amount. There is a specified rate of exchange. There is a specified time period. But the flexibility is that you don't have to wait till the end of the period. And in this case, you approach the broker or the agent because you can deal, uh, this time the bank will not be involved. This time the broker or the agent will be involved and you approach these broker or the agents of some exchange market, uh, which is like a stock exchange basically. Uh, and you find out that, hey, what is the price at which I can buy the future of one Australian dollar? And the guy say, yeah, you can. You can buy 10 million uh, worth uh, Australian dollars and the rate of exchange is uh, one Australian dollar is equal to 80 cents. And you make a calculation. Oh, it means that if I invest 10 million today, I own 12.5 million Australian dollars. That's very right. You're absolutely correct. And now you're betting that the price of the exchange rate of the Australian dollar should go up higher than 0 0.80 euros. Because if it goes lower and lower and lower, then you will be making a big loss, okay? So if good news is that next, the very next day, just imagine uh, the one Australian dollar is 0 0.90. You feel happy, you feel excited. And then you make a team meeting that, do you think that the Australian dollar will go higher than this? And you make a, after a lot of thought, you think that I don't think it's possible. It's a rare opportunity that there is a 10 cent increase in one day. And it could be possible that tomorrow and day after, and then it goes down. So this is the golden opportunity for you. And you contract, you contract your broker again. Hey, I'm willing to sell how much money I will get? And the broker say, all right, you can get 90 cents now, that's the price, okay? It means I get 10 cent gained uh, uh, in one day, yeah? And they say, yes, yes, 10 cents. Uh, how many Australian dollars I, I own in my account? Well, you have 12.50 million. It means that I'm going to gain, it's very important to, Right, that in which it means that I'm going to get 1.25 million. What is happening uh, in one day? Uh, so, this is the gain in one day. Oh, and then you, you have the right to buy and then you sell it, you close your position, you are richer by 1.25 million euros and say goodbye. This is what you do in case of the future contracts. You don't have to wait till the end. Whenever you look for the, you give a time window. Uh, in forwards, you, you buy something or sell something today and you, you appear on the deadline. Nothing happens in between. But in case of futures, if you buy something today, then you can sell any moment during the deadline. So it's like a flow of time. And once you find a good chance, just off board, take the opposite position and just go away and be happy or be sad. <laughs> so this is how the futures work. Uh, a few things that um, we have many big uh, exchanges, but in my knowledge Chicago Mercantile Exchange is the biggest exchange where you can trade all these uh, futures. And the trading is done, they, they, uh, in case of forwards, the date of maturity, the deadline could be anything you can, because everything is tailor-made. But in case of the futures, uh, 
generally the deadline is third Wednesday of March, June, September, and December. So you can buy, you can buy the futures anytime, but the maturity would be generally uh, these days. And they are mark to market. Mark to market means that you become richer or poorer on daily basis. So they are marked because if the price goes up and down, it can make you richer or poorer. But I'll come to this point a bit later. Uh, yeah, so these are the normal, uh, wait a sec. I want to show you something actually. So these are, for example, the contract size. If you are in the uh, stock exchange, uh, not the stock exchange, but if you are in the future exchange, uh, then normally if you are in America, in the US, then if you buy, if you want to buy Euro, then the minimum size of the contract is 125,000 euros. So it's a fixed amount, okay? You can't change it. In case of forwards, you can, because that's more OTC over the counter, negotiable. But here, things are like the showroom where the jackets are ready. You can't change them. Uh, if you want to trade in uh, British pounds, then uh, the minimum is 60,500. And when I say minimum, it means that there are multiple. If you want to buy, uh, if you want to buy one contract of British pounds in the US, then it's 60,500. If you want to buy two contracts, you, you have to pay 125,000. Uh, you know, for, you can buy for uh, 125,000 British pounds. But if you say that, hey, can I buy 100,000 British pounds? That's not possible because they, the, the contract has to be a multiple of 62,500. So if you want to buy a Euro contract in, in Chicago Mercantile Exchange, you can either have a contract of 125,000 euros or 250,000 euros or 375,000 euros. So they are the multiples of 125,000. So it's very rigid uh, scale. Uh, okay. And then you have, then the price is marked to market every day. Uh, but before I explain it more, let me search if I have any spreadsheet where I can explain this example. Um, you're muted, we can't hear you. Sorry, I'm sorry, yeah. Okay, so this time I would be creating an example in spreadsheet about the financial futures and we will do the calculations together. And if you uh, come across a problem, please let me know, then we can discuss. So let's say uh, a Belgian company or a Belgian speculator has uh, 10 million euros to invest and he, she hopes that Australian dollar will appreciate. So the exchange rate is. I'm sorry to interrupt you again, but I can't see the spreadsheet. I, I'm still at the slides. Can you see now? Yes, thank you. Okay. And he hopes that the the exchange rate is uh, one Australian dollar is equal to one to 1.25. And this is a spot rate. 
for it means. It means that the so so you have how many euros with you? Well, you have ten million. So ten million means six zeros. One, two, three, four, five, six. And if you want to have the Australian dollars, uh, how much you have then? Uh, let me format the cell. It should be number yeah one million. And I don't want any decimals, so I can get rid of the decimals. 10 million. And this would be, Australian dollar would be basically um, 10. So I should call it the value of investment. And I will do the calculations in Australian dollars. So the value of your investment uh, in Australian dollar would be so it means that you are owning uh, this multiply by 10. So now your investment is uh, 12.50 million. And this is a spot rate, okay? And spot rate means the current rate, right? And what is date today, by the way? Today is 11th of December. Now on 12th of December, Australian dollar is 1.23, for example. Is it good for you or bad for you? Is the situation good for you or bad for you? Bad. Bad for you. Uh, in other words, on day two, you have actually lost in euros, you have lost this much, okay? So what is the value of your portfolio then? the value of investment will be equal to your previous day. How much was the previous day? This one minus. So, so D4 was the previous day and minus uh, maybe I can slightly change the formula. So it can be uh, 1.23 times. Yeah, this is better. I'm sorry because I'm making this example right now. So there might be some issues. And then here we say gain or loss, gain or loss. First day is first day and then on the second day, we have a, a loss actually because we know that it's like this. So now this, this looks more much better now. And I save this file so that I can share with you. So that this is the FX future trading. And I save it in uh, mm. 
Yeah, I'll be sharing this file with you when we finish. All right, and then what happens is that on 13th of December, uh, the price goes even low. And what happens then? Once again, the value of your asset is lower. And you lose another uh, 400,000. But then on 14th of December, the price goes up to 1.23. If I make this E2 with a dollar sign, then it will remain same, basically. So then, twenty three, yeah, one nineteen, yeah. That that looks better because now I don't have to change formula every time. And then the next day, you get again. So you cover up your previous loss. And then on 15th of December, 2020, Australian dollar rises to even more, 1.29, big jump. And then you gain 600,000 in one day. And then on 16th of December, it becomes even more, but this time the jump is maybe by one or two. And now uh, you call a meeting of your uh, investors or, or your finance expert. And now you find that, you know what? It seems that the Australian dollar will not go any further. So it's time to close the position, time to close. So on 17th of, uh, 16th of December, by the evening, you decide to close the position. And you see that how much we have gained or lost. So you find the sum of your these thingies. And you find that net we have made 600,000. And guess what you do? You take the opposite position. You make 600,000 and leave the, and this gain and loss is in euros because we are checking in the home currency, it's very important to know here. Yeah. And that, that is the end of the position. So you close your position. Whereas the Belgian speculator has 100 million to invest and he and she hopes so. Uh, does he or she buys future FX future contract contract which will expire on 31st March because normally it's the third Wednesday so let's call it 24th March 2021 so your contract is valid till 24th, 24th March 2021 and you started on 11th of December and by 16th of December, you finish uh, your contract. And this is what you gain. So this is your gain from trading. Here we go. And this is when you, uh, this is when you are, can I rename it actually? Uh, yeah, so this is when you are buying uh, FX, you are buying FX. This is how it works. Is, it, is, is this example clear to you or not? Mm -hmm. 
generally, generally we write the exchange rate in uh, four decimal places. So I'm just making it a little bit. That's a convention that in the we write exchange rate in the four decimal places. Two, three. So I'm just creating it. Otherwise, there's nothing much difference. So this is your total gain. Uh, a tick. Uh, I mentioned tick is uh, is the difference. So here, um, if I copy and paste it. So the tick uh, gain or loss. I'm sorry, should be copy and paste. Yeah, like this. Uh, on 12th of December, you lost something. And the loss was this minus this. It's loss for you. So you lost how many ticks? You lost, so a tick, definition of a tick is the fourth decimal point, basically. So the last, the fourth decimal point. So in this example, you lost um, it should be here actually. So you lost loss is in the bracket 199 ticks. Start counting from the fourth decimal place. And the next day, you lose another uh, Is it exactly the same this time also? So this time you next time you lose uh, C6 minus C5, which is fine. So you lose 393 ticks. So you lost 199 ticks and then you lost 393, uh, 393. Why can't I show? Okay, all right, I can, no need. So this is 393 ticks we lose. Of course with the minus sign. Oh no, what I'm doing. This is fine. Minus so you lose 393 ticks. And then the next day you gain 393 ticks. Remember that the it's always from the fourth decimal point to onwards. And then on 15 December, you gain uh, 611 ticks. It's just a new thing for you, but otherwise there's nothing. Uh, so the next day you get 199 ticks. And then you check how many ticks you gain or lose. So sum of ticks. So sum of ticks. Sum of ticks would be equal to sum of these numbers, of course. And there we go, 611. So 611 ticks multiplied by the contract size, that's a gain. So nothing new really, nothing much, I mean, I can say. So you have this, uh, this is how we calculate tick or the gain of tick or something. You're, yeah, that's not, that's not something. Yeah, but the main thing is this. The main thing is this. 
really main thing. And I save this file with me so that I can share it with you. This is how the, and this, this thing, if you notice, I, I want to write a comment here. that the investor investor is gaining or losing on daily basis because the market price of Australian dollar is changing against euro every day. This process of gaining slash losing on daily basis is called marked to market. It means market is marking the investment with gain or loss every day. This is called the process of mark to market. I'm just using these words because these are used in the business jargons. These are used in the business language, in the financial language. So I want to use those words deliberately like mark to market text uh, so that you know their meaning in the financial context. Okay. I think I, I need to re revise the example. Uh, the increase in the price in this example is gain and the decrease in the example uh, decrease in the price in this example is a loss for you because you are going to buy the forex the foreign exchange the increase or the decrease are rich making you rich or poorer depending upon if you are a buyer or a seller and I want to give you an example, which is not exactly in the about the forex market. If you buy an apartment today for one hundred thousand today, and tomorrow the price goes up to one hundred and twenty-five thousand, it's good for you. It's a gain for you, because if you had not bought the apartment today, but tomorrow, then you have to pay twenty-five thousand euros extra. And if you buy the apartment today for 100,000 euros and tomorrow the price goes down to 90,000, it means that you in a way have lost 10,000 euros because had you waited for one extra day, you could have paid 10,000 euros less. So for a buyer of apartment, any subsequent increase in the price is a gain and any subsequent fall in the price is a loss. But not every increase in a price is a gain forever, and not every increase in not every decrease in the price is a loss for everybody. Depends you're a buyer or a seller. If you sell the apartment today for 100,000, and tomorrow the price jumps to 125,000 euros, you have lost 25,000 euros because had you waited for one more day, you could have gained. 25,000 euros. It means that for a seller, increase in the price is a loss. And if you sell the apartment today for 100,000 euros, uh, and tomorrow the price goes to 90,000, it's good for you. The price fall, good for you, because if you had not sold apartment today, but tomorrow, you would earn 10,000 euros less. So whether the increase in the exchange rate is good or bad, it depends on if you are a buyer of Forex or a seller of Forex. So the next example, which I will do, uh, basically would be based on this. So I'm 
trying to copy it, everything, and then I can change a little bit. Um, copy if I can. And if I can have it. All right. And I rename this as uh, sell voice, selling. And if I zoom in a bit more, so there is a Belgian speculator has 10 million euros to invest. And he, she hopes that Australian dollar will depreciate. Depreciates mean it will go down. So now the price of Australian dollar is up, but in the future it can go down. So it means that you can sell it now and buy it later. And if you want to sell it now, you want to sell it more price at more price. And when you buy it later, you wish to the price to go down, depreciate. Uh, does he, she uh, not buy, but this time sell? Sell at its future. Uh, the future contract which will expire on 21st, 24th March, 2021. So what happened is that this time the spot rate is uh, 1.2511 um, and because it's a selling okay uh, so in other words I have to change the formula I have to change the formula in other words um, just a sec the formula has to be So what was the form that here? It was uh, multiplication, multiplication, multiplication. Okay. So it means that the, uh, this column would be same, like nothing much to do. This is same as, but I, I want to, I want to make it like a formula so that you, and then I put a dollar sign in between so that the value do not change. Did I even put the dollar sign? No, I didn't yet. And then I click OK. And one, three, yeah. So that remains same, 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 same. And here the formula was that D5 minus D4, but in this case, I make it opposite. So in this case, I make it Mm, D4 uh, silly. So in this case, the formula would be in this case, the formula should be opposite, which means this minus. formula in this case was D5 minus D4. So in this case, the formula will be D4. D4 minus D5. And if I come on. Like this. Mm -hmm. And this will be the sum. Mm -hmm. These numbers. Yeah. So you bought something at this price. And when the price is low this time, because this time you're a seller, you gain. Price become even lower, you gain more. But when price start rising, you start losing. And then you find that, hey, you know what? Um, so in this case, you lost from same trading. 
and you find that the price is going to increase, 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 and when it increases, giving you loss, 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 and you think that the price will increase even more. So in this case, you want to close your position uh, before the loss becomes more, and you close it because you sell it, so the opposite position will be to buy it, and you ultimately end up buying Australian dollar more expensive. You were thinking it will go down, but it goes up. And as a result, when the contract is closed, because you want to close it sooner, because you know that now Australian dollar will go up against Euro and more up it goes, it will cause you more loss. Come on, it can make you bankrupt. So you say that, hey, whatever loss we have had, let's close the position soonish. So in this example, you are ending up with the loss from the trading. So there's no guarantee that you will be always gaining. The same price movement is making a buyer richer, but the same price increase is making a seller of uh, uh, the, the, the Australian dollar poorer or causing a loss. So this will be opposite now. So now the gain, what you think is a gain, is not a gain, actually it's a loss. So this will be plus. So 199 will be plus this, this case. 393 will be a plus in this case. Uh, 611 would be a minus in this case. Uh, no, 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 this, this 393 would be a gain because it comes two times. Uh, Uh, 611 is, is also a loss in this case. So, and 199 is also a loss in this case. And obviously this sum would be also a loss. So there is a, uh, the most important thing is this, which is a loss and it's a loss, it's a big loss. So there is no, uh, so depending upon who you are. And once again, as I wrote that I can, um, if I copy it, if I copy this text, then I can say that this is also uh, marked to market. This process of gaining and losing on daily basis is called mark to market. Mm. Yeah. Well, that's it for the uh, FX. Um, I would be sharing the three things now. I would be sh sharing the risk management slides topic, I think, that, but I can still share. And then I will be sharing it with you, the, the spreadsheet. And thirdly, uh, I would be sharing the recording once I receive. Okay. So, but do you have any questions about it? If you have, please ask me about these calculations. Well, these are dates. So I think. Let's do it. All right, so uh, if you have no questions, then I assume that all, all is good. As you rightly say that you have no questions, it's all clear. So it's great news.
So I saved this file and soon I would be sharing it with you. So thank you so much for your patience and your endurance. Uh, we have one more session next week uh, that I would devote to options and that will be everything. So today you have done forwards and the futures already and only one thing is left that is the options and that we shall do next week. Thank you very much.